You guys requested this. Let's see what happens. USB killer versus USB killer. And one side in and the other, both 3.0 versions. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. I don't know what I expected. Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here, and it's certainly been a long time since my last USB killer video. So this is the best and most effective way to kill your device while having the most fun with the USB killer 3.0. And I've got a bunch of new products to go ahead and test this out on. It's been a while, so there's a lot that's happened in between, but let's go ahead and see, are the latest smartphones nowadays equipped to handle the USB killer? If you guys don't know much about this, it's an instant death for any tech device. I plugged it into a computers, to my MacBook, to many phones, and this thing really is destructive. So let's go ahead and see if the Google Pixel oh. 2, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, the iPhone 10 clone, the iPhone 8, and even the new Nokia 3310 as per special request can handle the USB killer 3.0. This is the stronger version. It's faster, more dangerous than ever. And let's have some fun with my EMP. See if uh, this thing affects any of these new products or if they're protected against it. It looks a lot crazier than it actually is, but all right, let's get right to it. All right, so first things first is safety. I have been electrocuted too many times by my own creation. Even the USB killer 3.0 creates a really strong static. So these are anti-electricity gloves. They'll give me some sort of protection, even though I've been shocked through them before. Uh, and uh, let's start with the EMP. This thing's a lot of fun just to play around with, mess with these devices because it really interferes. In case you guys don't know, electromagnetic pulse, which interferes with the signal of the devices, it's pretty dangerous, but usually all devices have been able to go uh, scot-free from it, aside from some display issues. But uh, here we go, let's power this guy. All right, so there might be some interference issues. Usually it creates a really strong uh, static pulse that interferes with my mic. But let's start with the Google Pixel 2 and uh, see if this thing can handle this. I'm so scared of getting electrocuted. But actually not terrible. So uh, it doesn't really affect the display as much as you think it would but it becomes really slow and unresponsive. Okay, now working again, let's try that again. Look at that, it starts affecting it towards the bottom there. Flicker. So Pixel 2 XL really isn't affected much. They've got some really good shielding on this. Usually the iPhones do the worst. Let's try the Note 8. Oh wow, pretty bad flicker there. Oh man. You can really see where it interferes. It creates this glow on the display, kind of cool. Bang. But it is staying awake, staying alive. It makes your hands feel very weird. I, it's like tingly, really weird. All right, so Note 8 survived. Uh, not responding, oh, there it is. Okay, so it's alive. Let's try the iPhone 10 clone. Don't really have much hopes for this one. Oh, really messes with it, but does stay alive and awake. I feel like this iPhone will be in particular affected by this. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh man, that is bad. But it doesn't stay on it like it did on the iPhone. Oh, shoot, it just reset it. It completely just died on me. Let's try and power it back on. Is that it? Are you serious? I just killed my iPhone. Oh no, okay. It does still work. But man, does this thing affect it. The home button stopped working. It said you may need to service the home button. The display still works, but it really screwed with the home button. Wow. So iPhone is pretty unaffected by it. It does uh, tweak with the display, but nothing permanent like it was last year on the iPhone 7. All right, next up the Nokia. I don't expect this one to be affected at all knowing the Nokia legendary durability. Oh, but it is. All right, so surprisingly, all of these modern phones are resistant to the EMP. Last year's weren't as much. So now let's go ahead and grab the USB Killer 3.0. 
And a really nice packaging here. Destruction, that looks good. These are extremely dangerous, so if you guys ever do get one of these, be careful, they will destroy your stuff. It's not even a joke. All right, USB Killer 3.0 versus Nokia 3310 in three, two, one. Actually nothing. And it is in all the way. That's no surprise. Usually these kind of phones don't output energy. Uh, so there's no reason why that would even work. They just take in a charge. All right, so next up the iPhone 8. Usually the iPhones are pretty resistant to this, but I heard that the iPhone 8 is affected by this and using the new adapter that bypasses the security systems. Let's go ahead and see if it will produce a charge. Okay, and uh, let's see if we can get a spark going here. Oh my gosh! Wow, that was powerful. Can we reproduce that? I did not expect one that big. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, yes, I think we can definitely get a good spark going here. That is powerful. Okay, um, so trying not to get electrocuted here in a three, two, and one. Oh, definitely heard something happen. And I heard you're supposed to keep it in the phone for a few seconds. Oh, wow. It is just cracking. They really were not lying. This thing is one and a half times more powerful than the old one. That spark is ridiculous. Oh, the phone, the phone froze up. It is no longer responding to touch. The home button doesn't work, but that's from the EMP. So if I pull this out, will it work? No, I literally just killed my iPhone 8. It was working just a second ago. Yeah, I think it fried it. All right, so what just happened is that the lightning port got fried and uh, I believe this will not work if I go ahead and go to charge it, yeah. So it's just the lightning port that gets fried and the phone no longer charges. Still, I would call that a success. Next up, let's try the iPhone 10 replica here. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it and I doubt this one will work. Here we go in three, two, one and nothing. Yeah, this one doesn't produce a charge that leaves the USB port. So this one did survive even better than the original. And next up, the Galaxy Note 8. I've actually never had a Galaxy work with this. Uh, they're very, very resistant. So I'm gonna pop it in. And I just felt a little static come in. There is a little red LED I've never noticed before. It glows when it's charging. And uh, see if we can get a spark. Oh, wow, all right. Yes, definitely. Definitely a spark there. This thing is so powerful. I was definitely not expecting it to be this strong, that's for sure. So let's see if this will be the first Galaxy phone that is susceptible to the USB killer. Three, two, and one. Oh man, it is trying. It is trying hard. The Galaxy Note 8 is having none of it. It is sending so much electricity into that port, but I'm sure it has a fail safe. That is so good that Samsung has that. I mean, stuff like this could even happen on accident if uh, you ever get over voltage. It's not likely, but wow, yeah, this thing really is trying. Does not work though. Galaxy Note 8 is resistant here. So the last one to try is the Google Pixel 2. The original Pixel actually did die by the hand of the USB killer. Oh, uh, one. Oh, Holy crap, that actually worked. <laughs> I felt the spark in my hands. So I'm hoping that they put in some sort of protection in this one, we'll have to see. Let's try it for spark first. It is glowing red, so that's a good sign. That means we'll have some electricity. And let's try that. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot going through here. I'm more than positive that this does not have protection against this, so there we go in three. Goodbye, Pixel. <laughs> three, two, one. Oh, hey. It uh, did not work. That's crazy. The screen isn't responding though. What is going on? Oh shoot, the phone completely froze. It won't lock and it just died on me. Something just happened. Weird, I've never seen that before. I was trying to restart it. Ah, so this one wasn't instant, but it did kill it within a few seconds and it will not power on. That's crazy. 
So like the original Pixel, the Pixel 2 XL is not protected against the USB killer. So be careful, don't stick this into yours as it will not survive. So that's it, it's dead. It was crazy how it just froze up for a second. So Google Pixel 2 is a definite loser here. All right guys, there it is. The Google Pixel 2 XL has met its match against the USB killer 3.0. The only phone out of all of these to be affected by this besides the iPhone 8 with the port problem. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Just a little bit of tech torture for you. I'll be coming at you soon with those iPhone 10 videos. Peace.